Welcome back everybody. Today we're going over a rifle that tons of you over the years have requested that I review. Reason is it makes a lot of cameos and other video reviews, but I've never done a dedicated review of this Bushmaster ACR rifle. So uh, I've had this one in for years and uh, basically I've held on to it a lot longer than a lot of people have because I just see that the rifle has a ton of potential to it and it's been unrealized to this date in my opinion. So um, we're going to go over a lot of that in detail, but what we're going to do first is let the dogs take a look at it and step back outside to the range do an accuracy test with this rifle so you can see just what kind of groups it gets after that we're going to come in check out the details of it and i'll get into some of my complaints if you will and uh, we'll see if there's any solutions out there for them on the horizon We have a few different loads to run through the rifle here. Uh, up first will be some 55 grain Freedom Munitions remanufacturer stuff, just practice ammo to see how that does in the 109 twist barrel. And then uh, we'll move up to some loads that should theoretically get a little better accuracy. Uh, the rest is the CTK Precision Rest for those wondering. Uh, mount on the scope is a Geissele uh, Super Precision. Awesome, awesome mount. Uh, scope is gonna be the uh, Primary Arms 4x14 scope. Uh, with the HUD reticle, and I think that's pretty much it. Target is 100 yards downrange, and uh, we'll see what it can do. That was weird. 100% had some uh, horizontal stringing there. But overall, even with that, the group looks pretty good. So uh, first up, or next up rather, we'll grab the Freedom Munitions. This is their sort of nicer, more accurate, theoretically anyway, ammo. This is their 69 grain hollow, tail, hollow point boat tail rather. Um, I do have a code down at the bottom of your screen there to get yourself 5% off anything you order from Freedom Munitions. So, we always appreciate that. I need the ammo, I believe. I think it's only good on ammo. Not 100% sure. If you want to try it on something else, have at it. Um, but 69 grain, hollow point bow tail stuff. Um, should be just fine. Again, in the 109 barrel, but we'll see. Looks pretty good. Uh, one thing I want to go over now, though, is one of the cons of this rifle, and I've noticed it before, um, but I just noticed it again. And what it is is uh, what it is is when you're uh, looking through the scope, particularly like on moderate magnification, like right now I have it on eight magnification. Um, what you see due to the position of the piston, I think, in the way that it's covered and doesn't let it cool as well is that you get a lot of mirage on this rifle, more than most, um, more than like an AR, let's say. So it's just sort of something to point out. Um, I had to kind of wait on that last shot there for it to settle down so I could see exactly where my uh, my chevron in the scope was. So last up here, we're gonna have the uh, 69 grain uh, Federal Gold Medal Match ammo, awesome stuff. Uh, very consistent, uh, great reputation, obviously it speaks for itself at this point and uh, we'll see what it does. Off camera, I checked the scope just to make sure it wasn't loose. Whenever I see vertical stringing like that, 
it just uh, kind of makes me think that, but it's not. It's it's rock solid on there and uh, torque down just fine. So definitely not the mount. Uh, what we had here, again, 55 grain free diminutions group. We were coming in right at two and a half inches on that one. Then we uh, had the 69 grain here. Just under an inch and a half, so about an inch and three, three eighths, let's say. Um, and then on this one, definitely odd. I expected the gold medal match to do better than that. Again, we're right at two and a half inches there, no matter how you uh, measure it. So, um, you know, you read out there, these rifles certainly aren't match grade. Um, seems to be the case, but uh, not terrible groups at all. Just the stringing there kind of was odd to me because it happened with these two groups both. Starting out on the end, we have the A2 Birdcage Flash Hider. It works just fine. Uh, it does a decent job at mitigating flash, decent job at uh, mitigating muzzle climb. So overall, it's just fine. Then we move back to the barrel, and that sort of is one of my issues with the rifle, if you will. Uh, it has an M4 profile barrel. It's one and nine twists. It's got a melanite finish to it. It's 4150 steel, so the quality of it seems to be good. Uh, no issues with it outside of, you know, it's not the most accurate like you guys just saw. But the profile is just... Um, it doesn't make any sense, if you will, because the way the M4 profile is designed, it's designed to take the grenade launcher, and that doesn't work with this system anyway. So it doesn't make any sense to use that profile barrel. Additionally, you're getting all this extra weight up front that you don't need, and this rifle is already front heavy, which is one of my biggest problems with the rifle. It just feels very, very front heavy with the piston system and the barrel profile all kind of combined into one. Um, makes it not as handy as it otherwise could be. So um, that's certainly something I don't like about it. The rifle is a gas piston rifle, so uh, it has a piston operating the bolt and carrier instead of the traditional direct impingement type system with the gas going straight into the carrier. A lot of people do like that. I myself don't prefer either system. Both work just fine. However, we have two settings on there. It is the unsuppressed or the standard setting that you guys see there. And then if you want, you just push this little button here on the left side and rotate it around. And there you have your suppressed setting. So I'm going to run the special on there. You can do that without overgassing and beating the rifle up. That is pretty good um, and a useful feature, particularly these days. The handguard design on the rifle is pretty cool overall. They have two different options. The 1913 one, which has the quad relic 369 position, as well as the one you see here, which is the polymer one. This is the older rifle that has the old MOE before the MWOC came out. And now the newer ones will have the MWOC system on there. So you can attach all different types of accessories to there. Relatively easy. It keeps it nice and lightweight and has a good heat shield under there. So it doesn't get too hot. So overall, uh, it's a pretty cool little system. It comes off very easily as well. You just take this little pin right here and push it across. It is a captive pin. And then at this point, you just push forward on the handguard to take it off. So there you are. Now your handguard's removed. You guys can see it does have a good heat shield in there. And we'll show you a couple things here. First off, of course, let's focus on that barrel profile again. You can see how it's just uh, real heavy up front, not so much in the rear. And I wish they just continued that or even thinner out past the gas block. But anyway, rant over. So one thing that I don't like as well is that this is sort of how the handguard fits. And you can see this little lever right here that we'll get into in just a second. Sticks out basically to here on the handguard. It could be shorter because what it is, just to, I guess we'll get into it now, is the ACR has a quick change barrel. At least that's how they market it. So you just pull this down, twist the lever, and you can pull the barrel out of the receiver, which we'll show you probably in a follow-on video. Um, but it does allow you to swap your barrels out pretty quickly. Now, a couple of things with that. Number one, it loses zero. So just keep that in mind. You'll be off by about two to three MOA in my experience. When you do that, sometimes less, but for two, three MOA, it's about what you're gonna get. Now the lever itself sticking out so far um, blocks the usage basically of this rear slot just because the way it interfaces. You can probably use something in there, but a lot of things you can't. So just keep that in mind. It's also sometimes true if you're trying to put anything in there, um, but not a huge deal. Just something to think about. And you could actually lighten it up as well by making it a little bit shorter. So there's definitely things that uh, Bushmaster could do to improve the system, but it is a pretty cool little system though to be able to do that, have that capability built into every rifle. That barrel system we just talked about was one of the reasons that Bushmaster marketed this as a multi-cal rifle and uh, Magpul did as well when it first came out. However, uh, aftermarket and even factory barrels have not been available before 
just this year. So here's one of them that you see in front of you. This is the 18 inch sort of DMR style barrel that I just picked up from Brownells. And actually this is why we're doing the video because I wanted to do mm -hmm. an original video and then we're gonna do an update video with a couple different components down the road. So stay tuned for that guys on the channel here. So the barrels are out now. They make them an 18 inch, which is what this one is here. They have 16 inch, 14 and a half and 10 and a half inch barrel variants. They all come with the uh, AAC flash hider on there, which I certainly like. And uh, they're one in seven twist as well. Uh, 4150 steel again and melanated just like the originals, but they are different profiles and a little bit lighter in the 16 inch and shorter ones. So that will save you some weight. I know a lot of folks have been looking forward to that. Bushmaster says they're working on 300 blackout, but I believe it uh, when we'll see it. Continuing on with the rifle, the charging handle is a non-reciprocating, not ambidextrous, but swappable charging handle. So it comes from the factory on the left-hand side, and uh, you can swap it over to the right-hand side. If you lefties out there are folks that just kind of prefer that type of system, um, but the rifle cycles very smoothly. You definitely can't knock that on the rifle. Very, very smooth action. Uh, there is no forward assist, so if you wanted a forward assist, it, you'd have to do it by using the charging handle itself if you guys wanted that capability. As you can see on top, there is no uh, T markings on the rail. I do have some sights I'm just testing out on here, but it does come with Magpul Embus 2s for those wondering. With the exception of the charging handle, the controls of the rifle are ambidextrous, so that's certainly a good thing. And at the time this came out, that was something that differentiated it from a lot of options out there on the market. We also have ambidextrous sling points here up front, quick detach sling points. And uh, we have a quick detach sling point here on the stock, but it is not ambidextrous. It's one-sided and you can swap it just like the charging handle, but Back to the controls. So uh, here we have our magazine relief release. It's ambidextrous. It looks the same on both sides. And the bolt release here is down here. So we're going to lock it to the rear by pulling the charging handle to the back and pushing up on it. And then if you wanted to release the bolt, you can do it with your finger of either hand just by pushing down on it and we'll send it home. So uh, very good system there. I like the controls. They're easy to use. They're positive and uh, that's not a complaint at all of mine. Another good thing I like is they have a very nice, nicely flared magwell, which aids in reloading and uh, the grip of it is fixed. So you can't swap it out like an air, but it's very comfortable in the hand and it does have a storage compartment for those of you guys that like that. And the built-in trigger guard is also great. Um, so if you're shooting with gloves or if you just, are regularly out shooting you're not going to have your fingers scraping on the bottom of the trigger guard like happens with some of the usgi um, trigger guards for me anyway another thing they got right with the rifle in my opinion was the stock here it has a lot of cool features going on it's very ergonomic and uh it just seems very solid overall so it's a folding stock this little button right here is what you push to fold it you can fold it over to the right and uh, to deploy it, you just kind of pull out. If you do so quickly, it will snap and lock back into place. And again, it seems very solid. There's no play to it. I do like that. So the adjustable length of pull is by this button right here. You just squeeze it in on both sides and you can pull back and it locks in again, pretty uh, rigid. We have this little cheek riser here so you can adjust the height of the riser. You can put it flush or up like we have it here. And one thing I should point out while we're talking about that, is that the actual uh, height, over, height over bore of where you're mounting your optics is about half an inch higher than an AR-15. So if you're using an ACOG, let's say, that has a BDC type reticle in, in there, you just need to be careful about making sure that the BDC is gonna line up with it. Generally speaking, it will, but it's something to take into account. Um, most, most times it's not gonna be an issue though, but if you are shooting up close and you're used to that sort of two to two and a half inch offset um, that you're using to hold, depending on what your zero is, you're gonna have to increase that by about half an inch as well uh, for where your point of impact will be. The trigger that comes on the rifle feels very similar to a standard mil spec AR-15 trigger. So in my opinion, that's not bad at all. It's very usable, serviceable trigger. Um, if you just uh, take up a little bit of slack, has a decent break. It breaks right at seven pounds on my scale, but not too bad, but they do make an aftermarket Geisley trigger that I'm gonna to try to get my hands on for the follow-up video to this. So if you want an aftermarket trigger, it is an option on this rifle, unlike the handguard. We hit up most of the details of the rifle there. I didn't get too much into the operating system because I do plan on doing a clean lubrication guide in the future that we'll get into that a little bit more, but 
you know, it's a piston operated system. It's pretty simple overall. The gun's been pretty reliable. This one here has had a grand total of one malfunction ever through, I don't know how many rounds, definitely over a thousand, probably more like 2000. It's had one malfunction ever. So that's pretty good reliability. I'm not mad about that at all. Um, takes any of the standard uh, AR-15 mags out there that I know of. Some of the drums probably won't work because that just tends to be how things are with rifles that aren't AR-15s, but plenty of them do, and it seems to run fine with uh, really anything you put in it. So that's certainly a good sign. Runs fine suppressed like you guys saw, but again, the rifle has some things that I think can be improved. Number one. I'd like to see a thinner handguard out there for it, um, whether it come from Bushmaster itself, Remington, their uh, parent company these days, or an aftermarket solution that was nice and lightweight and a little bit thinner. That'd be great. I'd like to see a lightweight barrel come out that's in 16 inches. Again, they have the aftermarket one available now. Um, I'd still like to see them lighten that up a little bit because it certainly can be done. Uh, the piston system there has some weight on there that doesn't need to be there as well. Uh, there's been some folks over on the ACR forums that have really tackled this and shown how it can be done through uh, pretty good machine work. And these are guys, you know, with machine shops that are doing this. Never mind the folks at Bushmaster with the resources they have. They can definitely do that. Um, I'd additionally like to see, uh, of course, 300 Blackout come out. That was one of the big promises of this rifle. And as of right now, when I'm filming this video, and what is it, uh, April 2017, that has not happened. So definitely want to see that. Like we mentioned earlier, Bushmaster says they're doing it, but we'll believe it when we see it. So um, that would be great as well. Uh, additionally, I'd like to see a little bit more modularity allowed to the lower so that you could change the grips out because it's certainly doable. You could make that happen if Bushmaster wanted to redesign that and give you guys the options or give us the option, I should say. Um, other than that, I think it's, it's pretty good, but the weight at the end of the rifle really does just drive me nuts. It just feels so unbalanced. You know, when you compare it to the SCAR, um, it's just, it's so front heavy and uh, a rifle that's similar to it, but just... I believe at this point anyway, a little bit better is the CZ uh, Bren in that regard. The Bren's a front heavy rifle, but the Bren just seems like a better thought out package, if you will, than this does. So um, it's got potential. It's just yet to be realized and really at the cost that these rifles are coming in at. Um, that's kind of just inexcusable in my opinion. Um, I picked this one up a while ago, but looking around online, you're going to see these generally from what I saw, like $1,600 and up. So they're not cheap. I think the MSRP on it is like $20. $300 or something like that. So it's expensive. And for that, the rifle shouldn't have the, the sort of issues, if you will, or improvements that need to be made to it. And I think that may be one reason we don't see the aftermarket doing that well, because they're just not selling that well at this point. So um, that's kind of it. I think it's still a rifle that has a lot of potential, but we're getting there. We're just not there yet. So if you guys have any questions about the rifle or anything like that, you can always post down below in the comment section. You can also just post over at my Facebook page as always. Thanks for watching, guys. Thanks for subscribing. We'll see you in the next video.